Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about should version 2 of AutoHotKey take on a different name? Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. And Jackie Stook here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, and today, so we're talking about, you know, the new version 2 of AutoHotKey and should it take on a different name? And this this happened, and I forget where it came from, but I was talking to someone about it, and we were just debating about the the pros and cons of it. Is it, quote, unquote, better? And, you know, I think it's subjective. It depends on who you are, right? And for noobs, people that aren't programmers, it's going to be not nearly as easy as compared to the version one, the AutoHotKey underscore L, right, Lexicosis version. Of course, they're both now Lexico, so it's really confusing, but... um the version two gets rid of a lot of the simplicities of stuff and it, you know, and I'm not knocking it, right? Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. It's just to me, Jackie and I have also talked about how version one never gets the love. It, it people kind of frown on it as, as being a, a real quote unquote real programming language. And, and part of it, and Jackie, I think you've agreed to this before that the name auto hotkey itself kind of bottles it and keeps it from getting, you know, kind of positioned in a, in a more friendly way. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with that because um, I, I understand the name. I know where it comes from and uh, why someone chose it. But again, it depends on what you want to do with the language. Or, uh, and and Arhatki has made a name for itself and some people know what they can do with it. Um, and it's fairly quick to pick it up uh, for simple tasks. And we think that's a great strength of our hotkey. Uh, but building an entirely new version that might be easier on the back end and maybe more powerful and, and even more prototypey or whatever it might be, that, that's great. But if we remove a lot of those things that made our hotkey easy to pick up, is that only for the good? It's hard to say if you keep the name out of hotkey. Yeah, well, and and again, the the most of the people that complain that say, "Hey, auto hotkey is such a powerful language," but it never gets the love, it never gets the feeling, and it's like those people are the ones. I think they're more likely to be programmers that want this, you know, really thing to be taken seriously. But again, I think that name holds it back in some ways. So. We also, and I know Jackie and I, we've talked about this, like we're really kind of afraid of the whole comparison of the vanilla version you know, and, and underscore L, uh, zero, I guess, and one, of how confusing the forum was when, when we had both of those prevalent on the same forum and not being tagged correctly. And, and holy cow, it was a mess for quite a while. So, hey, why don't we proactively... You know, consider giving AutoHotKey V2 a whole different name and a different website and something also better branding and positioning wise that could, you know, people will maybe give it a little more respect. And those are the ones that are going to care. You know, p- the people that are probably somebody using AutoIt, right? Um, which isn't the best name in the world, but it's still, I think it's a little, little less hotkey ish. <laughs> Yeah, I'd, I'd say I, I understand you'll keep the hotkey functionality in version two. Absolutely. And, and that is a big selling point. And it's fair enough to, to try and take that niche and, and stay there without a hotkey. Uh, but again, I'm unsure if version two's um, new um, stricter syntax and stuff like that really needs to take the uh, goodwill of our hotkey with it, or if it can actually take enough members from the community over and become its own thing. I I do believe it should be able to do that. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, And and so this is just an interesting question where I'd I'd love to hear what you guys think as far as also, are you planning to switch over? Have you switched over? I see people asking, you know, quite often if, if people have switched over or, you know, want to learn more about V2. We did a webinar on it. Look, look for a webinar on it. And, um, we've talked about it several times. It's, it does have some big pro, like one of them is just, there's no more commands. It's all functions. And, and I say that, but then if I remember correctly, there's one or two commands or something. There's a little, there, there's, 
a couple things that, or at least they still look like commands. They don't, they don't use the parens in the same way as the normal functions, but they're still, they are functions. They just don't look like they're functions. Does that make sense? I'd say the, the thing with V2 is it's supposed to fry, remove uh, ubiquity or whatever. I'm not sure that was the right word, but it's supposed to at least remove a lot of these. Um, you can do it this way and this way. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's supposed to, to kind of narrow down how you do the stuff and make it simpler for someone to pick up. Because when V2 has been the main thing for enough time, um, the code you find should be very um, recognizable, consistent. Recognizable, yeah, where someone who usually don't use the commas in one or right. do it in a different way, it doesn't put in all the parameters and message box, whatever it might be, stuff like that should be one of the selling points of it not no longer being that way. Yeah, I know, um, back to your previous point, Python is, you know, that they're famous for, right? It's really, I think, one of the reasons why they've done so well is they have one way to do something, you know, and, and they live by it. And it seems a little painful at first, but once you realize you learn that one way and now you know how to do that, and that's, like you said, you can recognize other people's code because they do it the same way because there's just one way. So yeah. there's definitely some strengths in that. Absolutely. But let's awesome. hear your names or whatever you you'd come up with because I know it's been that before, but sure, let's hear what you have to say about it. Yeah, great point, Jackie. Uh, that, that's a fine one. Maybe we should make uh, a survey, a short survey or something about if we were to come up with a new name for it, what would be a good name? Uh, because and this is where my background in marketing stuff, and I know you know it too, but that name can really make or break, you know, anything. It's any sort of anything you're selling, right? That product name, it's huge. So, yeah, we, we, it would be great to come up with something. It doesn't mean that you can't have, like, a name like Python, you know, or C++. I mean, the, the, you know, these things are out there that don't have this a crazy, well, uh, instinctive name. But if you do give it something that really means something, it makes it much easier for people to understand what it is that you're using, and use it. Awesome. Well, all right. Well, let's chime in on the answers here. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.